Hello everybody, we are back. It is time to do the Halloween trial for Halloween. Even though this is probably going to be up after Halloween, but Halloween nonetheless. And yeah, I have had quite a lot of entries. More than, well, not more than I anticipated. I did not antis anticipate this amount. And yeah, this is going to be a marathon. <laughs> so strap yourselves in and don't worry, I will put, uh, if you want to just watch your match, I will put timestamps down below in the comment section. So they will be pinned for you guys, so you don't have to watch the whole video week for your matchups. Uh, matches will be in alphabetical order, so we'll start with Aaron Plays and we'll finish with Ultralord. And uh, yeah, all we need to do now is uh, I need to sort out what dinosaur I'm going to be using, come up with a moveset, and then we can begin. Okay, now to reveal your opponents. I did post them on the Discord, so some of you know who they are, some of you don't. But, I'm sure you can tell by the thumbnail, it is going to be against Panoplosaurus and Eocarcaria. And to pass this trial, you do have to defeat both of them. 50, you get 50% pass if you defeat Panoplosaurus but lose to the Eocarcaria. And to pass the trial, you do have to have your dinosaur with health left. So if you get a tie, I don't think that's going to happen, but it does. That doesn't count as a pass. You get like a 75% pass. And if you don't defeat Panoplosaurus, then it is a fail. The rules have been explained and everything. We can get started. Right. There's one more thing I need to address before we get started. And we need to establish what my dinosaur, chosen dinosaur, is going to be. Because, as I mentioned in the post, mine will be randomly picked since I set up the opposition. So, I thought it would only be fair if I went random. And so, we're going to find out what dinosaur I'm going to be using. And, uh, yeah, I got all the dinosaurs that are left from the roster that haven't been, uh, haven't featured. Oh, let's hope I get a good one. Oh, okay. A Guanodon. Interesting. Right, so that's my dinosaur. It's going to be an Guanodon. It's going to be fun. Right, give me a sec while I come up with a move set real quick, and then we can get started. Right, now that I have established a dinosaur and a move set for this trial, we can get started. And we're going to begin in alphabetical order. So, at first, we are going to see. It is Aaron Plates coming in with a Pentaceratops. And we're fighting on the beach. So, uh, yeah, how this will work. Moves will be ran. It'll be, you know, if you, if you watch my tour of the videos, you know how it works by now. Now, I did include a rule where. I allowed people to choose which move they wanted to go with first. Not everyone chose a move to pick first, so those of you that didn't will be default like normal. Okay, so for the first dino, it is Panoplosaurus. I actually didn't go through these, uh, the opposition. <laughs> and yeah, hardly anyone picked any character cards, so I just decided, nah, no character cards. We'll just have Max. And yes, it is a 1v2, and to beat this trial, you have to beat both dinosaurs with your one dino. I mean, it's supposed to be challenging. It's a trial. Okay, that's a good start from Aaron Blaze here, getting a first hit. Uh, this Panoplosaurus does have Crystal Crusher. It has Earthquake. And I forgot what his other move was. I think it's Skydive. Oh, that's an Earthquake. That's not good. And the second dino you face is Super Eucarcaria. Um, awake, the Awakener will be activated as soon as its HP is in the red. So that's something to, that is something to bear in mind. Oh, oh, okay. Um, I think this might be the end for Aaron plays. This Panoplosaurus is cleaning house. Another earthquake coming in. And I think we're going to have to give Aaron plays a failing grade. Oh, 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 hang on, Pentaceratops is still in it. Can he, can he at least rally back and take out this Panoplosaurus? Um, oh, hang on, that's a Dino Stuffer coming in. That's going to save the Pentaceratops from going down, but Aaron plays he's a miracle year if he's going to win in this trial. Ah, nope, there it is. Pentaceratops going down. Wow, that really didn't go well for Aaron Blaze. And unfortunately, they do fail this trial. Right then, coming in. Up next, we have got Asta, and they are coming in with an Amargosaurus. 
attack type Amargosaurus, and they have asked me to start with Paper, which is an interesting choice to be honest. But I'm sure they have their reasons. Now Amargosaurus will do well against that Eocarcaria, but they've got to get past the Panoptosaurus first. Right, um, I'm going to skip this since we've already seen this guy in action. And we already know what moveset he has. Oh, interesting. We're in, like, the, uh, earth field. Right, let's have a look. Ooh, they get the first hit. A good choice from Astrid. Ah, oh, open with paper. Getting the attack boost going as well. That could definitely help. That's a five. Oh, but Panoplosaurus responds with a crit. Can't afford any more of them. Okay, it's a tie. Oh, that's another hit from Panoplosaurus. The Quetz is going to come in here. That's going to be a skydive. That's going to cause problems for Aster. The Quetz is going to lower the technique of the Amargosaurus, which in turn is going to reduce the amount of attack boost that it gets if it gets a hit here. So that could be long-term damage, but look at this. The Panoplosaurus is actually doing a lot better than I thought they would. And, well, just like that, Amargosaurus going down. And Panoplosaurus really showing no mercy so far. Well, oh. Maybe I made this... I might have made this a bit too difficult. Oh, well, it's still early days, yeah. There's still about 30 of you guys to go. Okie dokie, up next we have got Battle Raptor, who I believe is a newcomer. Well, I, I don't recognise the username or the profile pic, so I'm assuming it's a newcomer. And they're coming in with Piatnitskisaurus. Oh, well, it's, it's definitely a hard hitter. I'm not sure how he's going to fare against the Eocarcaria if he gets that far. But so far, no one has managed to get past the Panoplosaurus, so... We'll see what happens. And they didn't specify... They didn't say to start with a specific move, so I'll be generating like normal. Oh my, oh my god. <laughs> um, that's not a good start. Although, it does trigger the hurricane beat. It's a tie. That's another tie. Another tie. Oh my god, there's a lot of ties. Which is not good for the Pianitsky sword. It's just wearing it down. It's trying to get off a hurricane beat. It just cannot get one off. And yep. Yeah, oh wow. A bunch of ties. And down goes Pianitsky Saurus. Just like that. That, that was really quick. <laughs> right. Next. Alrighty then. Up next, we have got Black Beauty. Yes, our champion from this year's tournament. Coming in with Ace. A uh, tie defense type, I believe. Now, come on, you're someone that should do, that could do well here. Uh, no wind moves, which will definitely help them if they get to the Eocarcaria. But so far, no one has got to the Eocarcaria. Because no nothing can beat this Panoplosaurus at the minute. Oh, and uh, Black Beauty has specified that they do want to start with Rock, so that's what we're going to do. Ooh, and they get the early crit. A power drain. It seems to be a favourite of theirs. This is a good start. Just the start they want. Okay, Crystal Crusher did not get triggered either, so that's even better. Oh, oh, Panoplosaurus landing a crit. I think so far, the only two hit... The only person who's actually got a legitimate hit off on the Panoplosaurus has been Aaron Blaze. Oh, hang on, till now. And that's a recovery as well. I mean, I say, like, with legitimate, because the hit that Aster got was because they went with paper, they wanted to go with paper. And the hit the Black Beauty got at the start was because it wanted to go rock. But look at this. Panoplosaurus not looking so tough now. 
This is more like it. A double recovery as well. Gonna heal up Ace all the way to the top. So they'll, he'll be at full strength to face that heal area. And he will be. The Panoplosaurus is going down. And, like I just said, Ace will be at full strength to face this Eocarcaria. Super Eocarcaria, that is. Now, the Awakener Mode will activate when his HP is in the red. Um, a standard moveset for Eocarcaria is... you got to have Flare Sword, of course, Heat Eruption, which could cause problems, and a Stun Dash, because I didn't want to put Burning Dash there, because... Well, no. <laughs> No, I pushed, I pushed Stun Dash for the, uh, because it was Halloween themed. Oh, that's a crit. Not, not ideal there, but... Ooh, but there's a recovery coming in. A double recovery. But that will be the end of recoveries for, the, for Ace now, so that is unfortunate. But you have to say, this moveset is working well for Black Beauty so far. Our op opponent is struggling to really land some damage on this. Okay, there's another hit. Can Black Beauty do this? Will they be the first to pass? Okay, that's a tie. Ooh, that's a crit. Will we see a Flare Sword? Oh, we do. That was a big hit from the Eocarcaria. Oh, that's not good. And with the possibility of an Awakened hit as well. Oh, that's a tie. Oh, it's a Heat Eruption. That's going to do it. Well, Black Beauty's come closer to it than anyone else so far. They've managed to get past the Panoplosaurus. But unfortunately, the Eocarcaria just proven a little bit too strong and takes out Ace. But they'll get an orange grade because they did beat Panoplosaurus. Okie dokie. Up next, we have got Blood Moon. And they are coming in with a Uteraptor. Um, well... I'm not sure how it's going to do against the Eocarcaria, but uh, maybe you can take out the Panoplosaurus. And they haven't specified what move they want to start with, so they'll be defined. Right, let's see how this one goes. So far, Black Beauty's come the closest. But can Blood Moon change that? Okay, there's another tie. Ooh! And that's a good start from Blood Moon. That's a crit. That's a ton to tornado, <laughs> tornado, tomato toss. <laughs> He's going to toss that tomato high in the sky. Well, it kind of looks like a tomato, actually, if you think about it. I mean, he is red, after all. And Crystal Crusher not getting triggered. Big shot from Blood Moon. Needs to take out this Panoplosaurus quick to ensure... That the Eocar that Eucharaptor has as much health as possible when facing the Eocarc area, and that's exactly what Blood Moon has done. Panoplosaurus, just like that, go in there. And this is just the start Blood Moon needed. Right, coming in next, we have got the Super Eocarc area. Yeah, Eocarc area! Uh, skip this since we've already seen it. Well, it's going very well for Blood Moon so far. Can he keep it up? Oh, he certainly can. That's the Venom Fang. That's actually going to be... That's going to be really beneficial. The poison is going to wear down that Eocarc area. But let's not forget, one Awakened hit will take out that Uteraptor. So you do have to be wary of that. But this is going really well. Tight. Oh, it's another tie. Oh, here comes the heat eruption. 
That's where you've got to be afraid of with these ties. That heat eruption is a big factor. I've really pulled out all the stops to take away as many of your tricks as possible. <laughs> you try a tie combo, I got heat eruption. You try to do something else, I do something else and that's not good. And suddenly, the Uteraptor on the brink. Okay, but it does get a hit. It's a bite in wind. Um, I don't think this is going to do much damage, though. That type advantage is going to be a problem for Bloodwing to deal with. And yeah, oh, not, not even in the red. God, can this Uteraptor dig deep? Okay, that's a tie. No heat eruption. And that could be a crucial tie if Bloodwing gets this hit here. Oh, and he gets it! We have our first pass. The Venom Fang is going to come in. That's going to finish off the Eel Carcaria. It's not going to even get the chance of an awakened hit because his health is so low. That was a crucial tie. And the fact that Heat Eruption didn't activate as well. And Blood Moon is our first combatant to pass this trial. With Uteraptor of all things. Alright then, up next we have got Conciliatory Past coming in with an Irritator. Um, they debuted in my tournament this year and they actually, even though they got out, went out to the group stage, they actually put up a good fight and this Irritator was a main reason for that. They seem to like it. Right, well we know our opponent, it is Panoplosaurus. Well, can Conciliatory Past have the same success that Blood Moon did? And they didn't specify what move they want to start with, so there we go. And that's a tie. Ooh, Irritate again in the first shot of the match. The attack boost is going to activate as well. I think there is one difference between the moveset for this Irritator and the one they used in my tournament. And I think they do have Ocean Panic instead. But that Ocean Panic is going to be useless against the Crystal Crusher, which has been triggered. Oh well, Panoplosaurus, no need no Crystal Crusher. Gonna come in with that Skydive. That is gonna cause problems because the Quetz is gonna lower the technique of the Irritator. Which will affect how much attack boost it gets should the Irritator get another hit in this match. So you can see, lowers the technique by 300. That also reduces the chances of Ocean Panic being activated. Okay, ooh, but the warning effect coming off the Irritator getting another hit. This is going to do extra damage because of that warning effect. Oh, you can see that there. Another Crystal Crusher being triggered, though. That's not good for Irritator. And yeah, you can see the buff there was lower than the previous attack boost. That's, that's the impact of that Skydive. Oh, and that's another Skydive coming up. Going to reduce Irritator's technique yet again. Of course, it has already matched up its uses of attack boost, so that doesn't matter. What does matter is the Irritator is on really low health, which is not good. Oh, but it does get past the Panoplosaurus. So that's one dino down for Conciliatory Pass, but the bigger challenge is going to be getting past this Eocarcaria. And with such little health, that's going to be a big problem for Conciliatory Past. I still think they do have a sliver of a chance if they do get off a crit, because Irritator does have the type advantage. They'll probably need to get the crit with the warning buff as well, and they'll be right in the mix. And they do have the Ocean Panic, which could cancel out the Heat Eruption. Oh, they get the hit. Can they rally here? Can the Irritate the rally back? Okay, that's a tie. Okay, no Ocean Panic, no Heat Eruption, but one more tie will finish off the Irritator. Oh, okay, Irritator getting some hits here. Oh, and look at this all of a sudden. Jack the Fusion. It's all down to this. Can conciliatory pass to it? Oh, he can't! Wait, hang on. This might not be lethal. 
No, it's not lethal. Oh, this is this is tense. This could this could actually be a tie. Oh no, we failed. The Eocarcaria gets the hit. And conciliatory pass comes agonizingly short. Right then, up next we have got Cryonova coming in with a Giganontosaurus. Self-proclaimed most spookiest move set in the um, in this video. Well, we'll see how it fares. <laughs> I, I still can't get, I still can't get over the previous match. That was so unlucky. Well, let's see if we have any drama like that here. Oh right, yes, they're starting with Rock. I forgot to mention that. Okay, that's a tie. At least I hope they want to start with Rock. That's another tie. Okay, so Giga gets the first shot. Oh, we're going to have a lot of ties in this match, I think. And the ties are going to wear the Giga down, so... Yeah, you've got to be careful of that. Oh, another tie. <laughs> oh, there we go. There's a hit, and it's from the Giga. Is that going to be lethal damage? Oh, it's not. And now a tie, and the Giga will pay the price. That Crystal Crusher has been triggered. Oh, they don't need a Crystal Crusher. They're going to get off an Earthquake. Panoplosaurus deciding to shake things up. Oh, look at that. That's not good. That's not good from the, from the Panoplosaurus. The Giga is really struggling. Okay, they do get past the Panoplosaurus at least, but... I think the Eocarcaria is going to be a stretch too far here. I mean, it, the Giga can't even survive a tie. That Panoptosaurus did some real damage. Those ties really did a number on the Giga. You know, taking into account that that was the Panoptosaurus' first shot. And look how much health the Giga has left. Well, let's see if it can at least... No, there it is. That tie will do it. And Giganonosaurus goes down. The Panoplosaurus really done the number on it. And unfortunately for Cryonova, they come up short. But at least they took out Panoplosaurus, so they get an amber grade. Alright then, up next we have got Dexin Winters coming in with an Alpha Super Minus. Um, a very attack-minded moveset this is. So I suspect we're going to see a lot of uh, action in this matchup. But will that be enough for them to pass this trial? Well, I, th I think this could come down to how much damage the Suko sustains against the Panoplosaurus. And that's not a good start. That's a crit. Not ideal, that. It does trigger the Hydro Cutter, though. And Hydro Cut the Reactivate then. Hmm. Respectable damage. Does trigger the Crystal Crusher though, so that's a bit of a problem. Oh, that's a crit, and that might be all she wrote for Panoptosaurus. Oh, bloody hell, bloody hell, well is. <laughs> well, this is interesting, because the, the Suko did take some damage. But it does have type advantage over this Eocarcaria. But it only gets it after a win, or it gets hit. So we're at an interesting crossroads here. Oh, OK, 
Okay, okay, that's a hit. Not the worst hit. Not the worst thing in the world. Okay, no flare sword either. So that's definitely good news for Dexy, but I can't afford another hit like that. Oh, okay, with the Hydro Cut the Trigger, type advantage is going to limit the damage. No, again, no Flare Sword, but that's not what you want if you're Dexing. Can the Suko get that hit? They can, and there's a Hydro Cut there. With the type advantage, this is going to do big damage to that Eocark area. Dexing's certainly not beaten yet. And that was a really good shot. And that also triggers the Futaba Cannon. The Futaba Cannon here could end this trap. Oh, he's going for it. Oh, he doesn't get it. The Eocark area doesn't fall for it. And unfortunately for Dexin, it is an Amber Grade. And the Eocark area takes out Alpha Sugarminus. But, you know, that was a good effort there. Those big hits definitely helped. Okie dokie. Um, yeah, sorry, I gave you Goma for some reason. <laughs> I swiped the Goma code on the wrong side. Anyway, up next we have got Dino Fans coming in with a Polar Canthus. Our orange local hero. A bit battered and bruised because they did lose the uh, recent grudge match. Oh, check that out by the way. Is that one already? Uh, we'll see how he fares in this, in this trial. Two of the more obscure Earth types in this game. Polar Canvas and not the sword. And yes, he wanted to start with rock, so rock we shall start with. Oh, and he gets the head. An opening crit from the Panoplosaurus. This is a good start. Okay, Crystal Crusher did get triggered, which is unfortunate. Defense boost coming in, attack boost coming in as well. That's gonna be really helpful. Especially if this Panoptosaurus gets off a Crystal Crusher. Oh, and it doesn't. And instead, it's another crit from Polar Canvas. This is a really good start from Dino Fans. That defense boost is maxed up now. As is attack boost. That's going to come in really handy when the Eel Carcaria comes in. Or if it comes in. It's tight. Another tie. And that's a third tie. And that third tie should be curtains for Panoplosaurus. And it is. Things going well for Dino fans in this trial. But we all know how quickly things can change. Especially when Super Eel Carcaria is in the ring. Oh, that's a crit. Okay, we'll see how resilient this Polar Campus is now, though, because look at that. That was a crit. Didn't take too much damage. That defense boost paying off. Oh, and there's a hit. A, a recovery, I believe that is. Good crit from Dino Fans. The attack boost increasing the damage. Recovery coming in. Things looking really positive at the minute. But can they keep it going? The tie. Heat eruption is a factor. Ooh, oh, okay. That's a stun dash. And we're actually going to see it for the first time. <laughs> I think it's the first paper hit the uh, Eocark has got off. Boosh. But yeah, not much damage dealt there. Panoptosaurus could probably tank another hit. Unless that hit was a crit. Oh, well, we're about to find out. Oh, is it going to be able to tank this? I'm not sure it can. No, I don't know. I don't think it's going to survive. No, definitely not. Nope, there it is. Unfortunately for Dino fans, Eocarcaria just got its groove. And, yep, the Stun Dash slapping some sense into that Polar Canvas. Right. Up next, we have got Dino Hug, and they are coming in with an Allosaurus Atrox. Um, a very uh, base move set, this is. <laughs> but it is uh, very classic, so as to say. But maybe sometimes we just can't beat the classics.
And they haven't, they didn't specify if they, that they wanted to start with a specific move, so we'll generate like normal. Starting with a tie. Okay, that's another tie. Ooh, Panoplosaurus getting the first shot. It's a skydive that's going to lower the Atrox's technique. Not that it has any. Not that it needs any. But not a good start. Plus, this Atrox is really struggling to get hits at the minute. Okay, a crit could be ideal here, but no, it's another tie. One, and a, oh, I think that's going to be it. The Earthquake is going to come in. That's going to finish off the Atrox, and unfortunately for Dino Hug, it is going to be a failing grade. And yeah, there it is. Wow. That was quick, wasn't it? Well, un unfortunately for Dino Hook, the classic moveset didn't work. Alright, up next we have got Dino Hunter. And they are coming in with a Dynamicus. And they want to start with Paper, which is no surprise because that's a crit. <laughs> well, just because they're starting with Paper doesn't mean they're going to get Paper. Well, can this Deinonychus get past this Panoplosaurus? It's the first secret dinosaur we've seen so far. We'll see how it fits. Right, first things first. Paper. Ooh, and he does get the crit. That's a good start from Dino Hunter. Getting that opening crit on the board. Always helpful. Oh, and that's another hit. A defense boost coming into play here. This is a really good start. And look at that massive boost of defensive power. And the secret move has been triggered as well. Ooh, but Panoplosaurus responds with a crit. Again, the secret move being triggered does limit the damage the crit does. Since secret dinosaurs do have type advantage over all the other types. Type. And that crit's going to seal the deal. And a bit of recovery as well. So the eel ready for the eel carcaria. And look at that. Deinonychus up to full power. Ready to tackle this eel carcaria. Or is it? Well, one thing's for certain. This is going very well for Dino Hunter. Will they be the second combatant to pass this trial? Oh, that's a crit. Now the Deinonychus does have the defense boost. So it will take limited damage, but that's still damage. Ooh, but what a response. Another recovery. That is going to be it for recovery, though. A crossing attack is going to come in here. This is going to deal big damage to the Eelkark area. And this is going really well for Dino Hunter. Okay, that's a tie. Oh, here comes Heat Eruption. Heat Eruption is a factor. It does go through Defense Burst, so... Yeah. Heat... The Eocarcaria can wear him down with Heat Eruptions. And the Recovery is all used up as well, so the Deinonychus will not be able to heal this time. And yet there's the uh, extra damage effect. Oh, that's a tie. Oh, that's another heat eruption! Deinonychus getting worn down with these heat eruptions. But the saving grace for Dino Hunter is that Eocarcaria is getting low. And I suspect one crossing attack or a crit might be enough for lethal damage. Which would deny the Eocarcaria the chance of an awakened hit. Ooh, and Dino Hunter does get the next hit. I don't know if this is going to be lethal. Oh, it's not. Look at that. Okay, it is awakening time. Dino Hunter on the brink of passing this trial, being the second combatant to do it. Oh, 
I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll give him... I'll give him a nearly grade. <laughs> well, that was exciting, wasn't it? I wasn't really expecting one of these one of these matches to end it all a draw, but there we go. Right then, up next we have got Dino Smash coming in with a Despletosaurus. With very red armpits. Now, I will say, this is probably their most gimmicky moveset they've ever done. And I'm not sure how far this is going to get them. But if they pass this trial... Wow, that'll be extraordinary. Well, so far we had Blood Moon pass the trial. And Dino Hunter got a draw. So, we'll see. What, Dino, what the Di Dino Smash can do. Uh, they didn't specify starting with a specific move, so we'll be generating like normal. And we'll start with a tower. Ooh, Panoplosaurus getting the first shot of the match. It's a skydive. The Quetz is going to come in. The Terror of the Skies. He picks up Dinos and then drops them from a great height. Because a Quetz can do that, apparently. Ooh, ooh, hello, we got a crit. An Anion Gera dive coming as well. Does people saw us has a very hard hitting crit. <laughs> Combo that with the Anion Gera dive. Oh, oh, here we go. Another Anion Gera dive. An Alpha Trooper move coming in. They got two of these buggers. We gotta press the mush the button. Maximum power. These will never see play. I mean, I don't think they're that good, to be honest. I mean, they have, like, benefits, but uh, in terms of actual damage output, they're pretty meh. And the bonus you get in terms of, like, attack and uh, technique is also meh. But, meh or not, it did take out the Panoplosaurus. And we are down to Eocarcaria, Super Eocarcaria. This is actually going pretty smoothly for Dino, that's Dino Smash. Oh, it's because I've done, because I've done it in alphabetical order. I got all you guys with Dino at the beginning of the usernames at the same time. Okay, as a tie, no heat eruption. No, that's good news for Dino Smash. That would have probably finished off the Despletosaurus. Oh, okay, here we go. Another Alpha Trooper move in coming. No Onion Gear dive this time. Well, I tell you what, his makeshift um, move set is really putting up a good fight. And a crit here would certainly make things interesting. Okay, it's a tie. No heat eruption again. Got away with it. Ooh, now this thing, now things get interesting. Another Alpha Trooper move. And all of a sudden... Can Dino Smash actually do this? Oh, it's awakening time. Darkafusia. Well, it's all on this now, isn't it? I'm not sure if the Alpha Trooper moves do go through awakened mode. Defensive resilience nest. But we're gonna, we might find out. Oh, no, we're not finding it out. <laughs> there goes the Spetosaurus. Down in seconds. But I tell you what, for a uh, kind of a meme-ish moveset, I'll give Dino Smash credit, because they, they did better than I thought they would. Okie dokie, up next we have got Epic Brad, and they also have a Dynamicus like Dino Hunter. And like Dino Hunter, they want to start with paper. Um... Epic Brad debuted in, in my uh, tournament last year. Well, this year, I, I should say. And they did well, They did okay. They tried their best, but, it, you know, it didn't happen for them. But hopefully, things will happen for them in this trial. Well, we saw one Deinonychus get a tie. Right, first things first, we'll start with paper. Can this one do just as well? Okay, there's a crap. Slightly different moves, I think more offensive in my opinion. Ooh, Crystal Crusher getting triggered there. Amnion Gera Dive coming in. 
and that does trigger the spinning attack. And the spinning attack be activating just like that. Panoplosaurus is probably going to go down. And that was really quick. And well, well, that was really quick. Um, okay. Up next, we got Super Eel Karkaria. Now, this is really good for Epic Brad. Get into the Eel Karkaria. Full HP intact. Really good start. Can they keep it up though? They certainly can. That's another hit on the board. But remember, that awaken mode is a big factor. Well, <laughs> is it, okay, this is going too well. That's another hit. Is that going to drop his HP in the red? It is. Here we go. It is awakening time for the Eelkark area. The secret move hasn't been triggered either, so a crit from this Eelkark area could be devastating. Oh, he gets the hit! A devastating hit! Awakened hit! Massive shot, but no Flare Sword! Oh, Epic Brad breathing a huge sigh of relief. The Flare Sword did not activate. If that activated, that would have been game over for Deinonychus. Oh, it might be... Oh, no, it's Dino Stuffer! The Dino Stuffer is going to stop that crit. That would have been it for Epic Brad, but they still hang in there after a brilliant start. The Eokark area is starting to rally back. Oh, and they get the stem dash. Is this lethal? I think this is going to be it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't see the Deinonychus surviving this. Oh, and down it goes. And unfortunately for Epic Brad, despite the really fast and aggressive start, that awakened hit really made a big impact. Right, okie dokie. Up next, we have got Futuristic coming in with an Amargosaurus. Um, it's attack type. And he, ha and he does want me to start with Scissors, which is uh, no surprise because of how strong this guy's crit is. And it does have Shockwave as well. I think this is the first water type we've had with a Shockwave move removal move. So it'll be interesting to see how he fits. Uh, move removal rules will take effect, like they normally do. Right, I'll start with the scissors. Oh, that's, oh that backfired. It's a Sky Dive. That's going to lower the technique of the Amargosaurus as well. Not a good start for Futuristic, who had a pretty good debut in my tournament this year. But that is definitely not a good start. Now, Amargosaurus does have Technique Boost, so he can get that Technique back, but uh, yeah, not ideal. Okay, there's a hit. Amargosaurus responding well. Okay, Crystal Crusher being triggered there. Technique Boost activated. No Shockwave or Aqua Jam. That that Quet's probably making an impact there. Okay, but there's another hit that's going to max up the Technique Boost. That's Technique Boost all used up now. We should see something. And we do. What's it going to be? It's an Aqua Javelin that's going to add extra damage to that Panoplosaurus. Good response from Futuristic after the early setback. Ooh, but Panoplosaur is not done yet. Getting off another skydive. Gonna yet again lower Amargosaurus' technique. Doosh. Well, we saw the Irritator earlier. On really low health. Take the Eelkark area to the brink, so... Well, you, you never know. Maybe this Amargosaurus can rally back. But it's not looking good for Futuristic at the minute. Okay, there goes Panoplosaurus. Panoplosaurus is going down. But now the big threat comes in. The Eelkark area. The Super Eelkark area. And despite the type disadvantage, the Amargosaurus did take a fair bit of damage as well. So, uh... Again, no. We saw with the Irritator earlier. They can, they can rally back. 
And, well, a crit is definitely going to help. Massive hit from the Amargosaurus and Warrior Goyer. Oh, it's a shockwave this time, which guarantees Amargosaurus at least some damage. Now, the problem is Heat Eruption could activate here, so as to the shockwave rules, we will go for Rock. Okay, that's a tie. Okay, no Heat Eruption there. Futuristic dodging the bullet. Oh, and has he done it? Has Futuristic done it? Yes, he has! And Futuristic being the second combatant to pass this trial, joining the likes of Blood Moon. Well done, the Futuristic. The Amargosaurus really worked a treat there. Okie dokie, up next we have got Gold. Coming in with an Alpha Kentrosaurus and they have requested to start with Scissors. So Scissors is what they will start with. Um, they, it didn't happen for them in my tournament this year. They did go out of the group stage. I think they got like a few wins, but yeah. Let's see if they have any better luck in this trial. So, they have opted to start with Scissors. Probably want to get that early hit on the board, and indeed they do. It's a mole attack. Good start from gold. And the attack boost coming in as well, which could be very good for this Alpha Kentrosaurus. His stats are very balanced. So any hit from it is going to do damage. And in a 1v2 matchup like this, you've got to make the most of your hits when you get them. And so far, Gold is doing that. A spike arrow is coming in. Very attack-minded moveset this is. Will it pay off for them? Well, so far, you'd have to say it is. And look at that! Massive hit from the Kent. And the Panoplosaurus is on the brink of going down already. And well, there it is. Down she goes. And the Kentrosaurus remaining relatively unscathed, which is even better for gold. Righty-ho. Up next, we've got the uh, Super Eel Carcaria. Can gold get past this thing and be our third combatant to pass this trial? Oh, well, that's another hit. I believe this thing is poison type as well, so the poison effect could be beneficial. Three and a three as a tie. No heat eruption, though. And it's another tie. Again, no heat eruption. Gold getting away with it at the moment. That's another tie. And still no heat eruption. And a hit! Is that going to do it? Is that going to do it for gold? Wow, I don't even think the uh, Panoplosaurus or the Eocarcaria got a hit. Yeah, they've done it! Wow, that was crazy! Absolutely mental! Panoplosaurus didn't get a hit. Super Eocarcaria didn't get a hit. And gold becomes our third combatant to pass this trial. Okie dokie, up next we have got Guardian Leviathan coming in with an Alpha Irritator. And they have requested to start with Scissors, and they shall start with Scissors. Well, the last two guys started with Scissors, and things went pretty well for them. Can Guardian Leviathan make it three in a row? Well, we saw one Irritator come really, 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 really close to winning it. Can the Alpha Irritate the duet? And he's got home field advantage because he's in the Alpha Arena. Not that there's terrain advantage in this matchup, but you, know, you never know. Oh well, terrain or not, it is Panoplosaurus getting the first shot of the match. And it's an Earthquake. Oh jeez, that was a lot of damage. Not a good start for Guardian Leviathan at all. And oh, oh, um, oh dear. <laughs> I think this might be the end for Alpha Irritator. Wow. Crushed into pulp in second by the Panoplosaurus. Panoplosaurus was really out for blood there. Oh look, the normal Irritator. Um, well, unfortunately for Guardian Leviathan, that's how it goes sometimes. 
Right, up next we have got Hollywoo coming in with a Daspithosaurus. Um, this Daspithosaurus is quite fiery and it does actually have death fire, which is an interesting thing to note. And I believe this guy is the only person using death fire. Which I'm kind of surprised about, but not really. With the uh, limited options I set for the fire types, you know, some people can't pick some of their favourites weren't included, like uh, obviously Sauropagonox being a big uh, omission, for example. But yeah, I just wanted a good balance for each group. And not just have it gluttoned with fire dinosaurs. <laughs> but anyway, back to this. Uh, they didn't specify to start with a specific move. So we're going to start with attack. Ooh, the Panoplosaurus gets off that first hit. Now, ideally, for the in the case of the Death Fire, they want to get it triggered with the Eukarkaria in play. They don't want to waste the opportunity on the Panoplosaurus. And that's not a good start from Hollywood. Okay, that's better though. That's a burning dash. Good response from the Displetosaurus. And this Displetosaurus, it also has heat eruption as well, so that is a factor. Although I suspect it will have very little chance of getting it off against the Eocarcaria because it also has heat eruption, but the Eocarcaria has more technique. Oh, that's not good. That's a Crystal Crusher. And is that going to crush any chances of Hollywood passing this trial? Okay, let's have a look. Oh, it's a tie. And yeah, that gets, that kills any hope of a death fire as well, actually. Okay, there's a hit. Well, death fire may be gone, but they're still in this. And they take out the Panoplosaurus. But skip. Well, they're going to have to dig deep here against this Eocarc area. No death fire. Well, probably little chance of a heat eruption. And nope, there it is. <laughs> Just like that. And unfortunately for Hollywood, that, that Panoplosaurus really did some damage. Okie dokie. Up next, we have got Kajon coming in with a Gojurasaurus. Uh, they've requested to start with Rock, naturally. Um, I don't know how this guy's going to do. I mean, we saw the Pianitskisaurus earlier and it really struggled. So I, I, I don't have much hope for this guy passing this trial, but hey, we've seen one win dinosaur do it, we've seen Rita have to do it, so it's proof it can be done. Guess it's tight. Oh, that's not a good start though, that's an earthquake right off the bat, Panoplosaurus getting off to a quick push, earth shaking start. Oh no! He's hungry for the blood of wind types. Now, okay, that was a big hit. That's not good there for Kajon. Okay, it's a tie. Are they even going to get a hit? A tie. Yeah, okay, yeah, this is looking really bleak. Come on, give him at least one hit. Okay, there's a crit. And a much needed one as well, a skydive, the Quax is going to come in. Ooh, Knockasaur is going to get a taste of his own medicine, yeah? Well, they've got one hit. And actually, they do have the slight lead. But the Gojurasaurus has taken an absolute lashing. Oh, hang on, what have we got here? That's a Cyclone. Ooh. This could be interesting, because Cyclone is in effect. As is the Crystal Crusher. I can't remember. I do think the Crystal Crusher does out does uh, counter the Cyclone. Well, we're not going to find out because 
Panoplosaurus is going to return the favour and get off a skydive to take out the Gojurasaurus. And unfortunately for Karjan, it is going to be a failing grade. And Gojurasaurus will suffer the same fate as the Pianitskisaurus did. Um, good try, good try. Okie dokie, up next we have got Kaz coming in with a Sperizinosaurus. Uh, it's counter type. I actually think this is the same fairy they used in my tournament with, ide with an identical moveset. So they must have a lot of faith in it. Well, we saw how effective it can be. You know, Kaz getting to the semi final, so maybe they, I think they got a good chance of passing this trial. And the Archaeopteryx Charm, it can nullify the Skydive and the uh, Crystal Crusher. And they didn't request to start with anything in particular, but they'll like this start anyway because it's a crack. The Elemental Power coming in. Oh, that's another crack. This is a really good start from Kaz. I wonder if I allowed it, would they have used Jovoria? I suspect... I suspect they probably might have. But anyway, back to the match. That is the elemental power all used up. But this has been a very good start from Cats. Ooh, okay, that's not too bad, because again, the Skydive is going to come in. It's after effect. We'll get nullified by the Archaeopteryx charm, so the fairy will heal up here. So it's not too bad. So yeah, Archaeopteryx Charm, for those of you that don't know, it does remove all debuff effects such as low end technique, and you can see there, gives them up. So moves like Shockwave, Skydive, anything that like debuffs your dinosaur will be nullified by the Archaeopteryx Charm. Although, another Skydive does mean that the Archaeopteryx Charm is going to be maxed up now, so we won't see any more Archaeopteryx Charm in this match. I suspect Kaz would have wanted to have saved at least one for the Eocarcaria. And yeah, you can see the issue with the Archaeopteryx, Archaeopteryx Charm is that the health regen does vary. You know, it's not consistent. So it was a good start from Kaz, but the Panoplosaurus has really rallied back here. Oh, and that's a crit. Okay, the elemental power buff might, should limit the damage. Yeah, very little damage done, but Kaz is in a bit of a pickle here. Needs to get rid of this Panoplosaurus. Just can't get rid of it, and that's another crit. Panoplosaurus really out for blood here. The Ferrazinosaurus must have done something to tick it off. Okay, there's a hit, but... Has the damage been done already? The fairy is on the brink. No elemental power. No Archaeopteryx charms to save it. I think this I think this Eocarcaria is gonna prove too much for Kaz here. But let's see how far they can go. Oh well, not very far. <laughs> well they got rid of the Panoplosaurus in the end, but yeah. Good try though, Ferrazinosaurus had a very good start, but yeah, that Panoplosaurus, well they would have got a failing grade if we went for the Archaeopteryx Charm, so yeah, good try. Alrighty then, up next we have got Lad coming in with a Lambiosaurus Magna Cristatus. An absolute nightmare for those that have pronunciation issues. And well, if that's, ba if that's not bad enough for you. It will stuff the Panoplosaurus with the Dinocephal, crush it with a Neck Crusher. Oh, that was my sorry, that was my phone, ignore that. <laughs> right, anyway. I forgot what they, they wanted to start with paper. Hang on, I need to double check. <laughs> sorry about that, they have to start with paper. The, the very phone distracted me. And they do get off the Neck Crusher. Good start from Lad. Well, they're the only person using a grass dinosaur in this entire event. 
Well, obviously apart from me, but mine was randomly chosen. And I kept saying, oh, they're going to have type advantage over the Panoplosaurus. They don't even have a freaking grass roof. <laughs> so when everything's said and done, the only person that has a type advantage over the Panoplosaurus is me. <laughs> so you thought, ah, oh, that's right, they'll break things with a tiebreaker. And well, it's a very good start from Lad so far. Getting past the Panoplosaurus relatively comfortably. Ooh, but Eocarcaria gets, gets the first hit there. That's the first hit that the Lambio Mac has taken. Oh, that's a crit. But the Dino Stuffer is going to come in. It's going to nullify that crit. How crucial could that be come the end game of this trial? Okay, that's a tie. That does put the tiebreaker in effect, should Lad get this next hit. Hmm. Lambio Mag is starting to lose a bit of HP here. The ties are wearing it down. Heat Eruption is a... Be quiet, phone! Heat Eruption is a factor. Oh, I was close. And that's Heat Eruption! I think that's going to do it! Yeah, I think that's going to be it for Lad, unfortunately. The heat eruption with the volcano burst effect on top of there. Yeah, there it is. Unfortunately for Lad, it was a good effort, but the Eocarcaria really turned things around. Okie dokie, up next, we have got Lozange coming in with a Pentaceratops. The second Pentaceratops to feature so far in this video. And well, the first one didn't do too well. So here's hoping that this Pentaceratops does a little bit better. That type disadvantage against Panoptosaurus is a problem. And that is the unfortunate downside of using lightning types. But, you know, it is what it is. It happens. Oh, it's a sky dive. That's not a good start. The quest is going to come in. It's going to reduce Pentaceratops' technique as well, which reduces the chances of it getting off an electric charge, which it probably is going to need to get past this Panoptosaurus and set itself up nicely for the Eocarcaria. But unfortunately, that quest is going to nerf its technique. Not a good start. A good response, though. We got a Tail Smash. So Tail Smash is the way forward for Pentaceratops here. And, well, they get the electric charge off despite the technique nerf. Good response from Lozenge. Oh, but the Panoplosaurus gets a crit. That's going to be a big shot. Look at that massive hit from Panoplosaurus. And things not looking good. The tie. All right, can they at least get past this Panoplosaurus? Nope. And, well, just like the first Pentaceratops, this Pentaceratops bites the dust. And unfortunately for Lozon J, it is going to be a failing grade. Well, yeah, it's, it's always tough when you have type disadvantage. It is tough. Righty-ho, then. Up next, we have got Mwah. Coming in with an Alpha Allosaurus. Now, I quite like this uh, setup actually. It's got all Alpha moves, so no wind moves. So it doesn't have to worry about type disadvantage against Eocarcaria. I think he's got a good chance here. Skip. But before worrying about that Eocarcaria, they've got to get past this Panoptosaurus first. And they wanted to start with paper, I think. Hang on, I need, sorry, I need to double check. Yeah. <laughs> I literally read these two seconds ago. How do I forget? <laughs> but anyway, that's a good choice here from Mon. Getting off the softening beam early on is going to increase the damage the Panoplosaurus takes during the time. Oh, but Panoplosaurus responds to a crit. 
Unfortunately, the Alpha Allo does not have Dino Stuffer, so he can't stop that crap. Nor is he going to stop this earthquake. Panoplosaur is really going for blood here. Look at it, his spikes are covered by the blood of its victims. The ones it had battled already. <laughs> and well, things not looking good for Mark. But can they rally back? Okay, that's a tie. And yet, Panoplosaurus will take more damage, but tie's not good enough for Man. They need a hit. Oh, the, oh no, the Allosaurus goes down. Unfortunately for Man, it is going to be a failing grade. All righty then. Up next, we have got Maastrician, last year's champ, coming in with a T-Rex. And they have requested to start with Paper, which um, comes as no surprise. <laughs> Hmm. This will be an interesting one. It is counter type as well, so after it'll get, it gets hit, it will get stronger. This, well, again, Pete is probably a smart play actually because the Panoplosaurus is a, has a scissors quick, so the worst that can happen is that the diamond stuff it goes. But let's see what happens. Oh, instead, it's going to be an opening crit from the T Rex just to start Maastrician once. And a dive to come as well. Big damage done to Panoplosaurus. Ah, oh, I wanted a volcano burst. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. Three. Ooh, and that's another hit from the T Rex. Another dive coming in. This is a fast and furious start from Maastrician. Now, a volcano burst here would spell the end for Panoplosaurus. Nope. Ooh, okay, but that time almost does. Oh, ooh, Panoplosaurus getting off the, the skydive. That's going to cause a bit of an issue. It is going to lower the T-Rex's crit technique, sorry. And that does decrease the chances of Volcano Burst and the Anyangera dive being activated. Costly skydive that could be. Okay, here's a crit, but the Dino Stuffer is going to put a stop to that crit. Going for a crit there from the T-Rex, it was the safe option, because the Panoplosaurus could not get a hit. Oh, it's an earthquake. Oh, well, it was a promising start from Maastrician, but the Panoplosaurus is really fighting back hard. Clinging on here, doing damage, wearing this T-Rex down. Oh jeez, that was a lot of damage. Can Maastrician it? Oh, it's an earthquake! Oh, the Panoplosaurus is showing no mercy today. And it wastes the T-Rex. And unfortunately for Maastrician, it is going to be a failing grade. Wow, that was rough. <laughs> okay, coming up, up next, we have got Melly's coming in with a T-Rex, which is also counter-type. Same as Maastrician, but a different move set this time. They've gone for more attacking with the Burning Dash, so we'll see how that works out. Right. Well, the Panoplosaurus already dispatched one T-Rex literally two seconds ago. Will it dispatch this one? Oh, and they have requested to start with Paper. So they will be starting with Paper. Okay, that's a tie. That's not too bad, though. It does trigger the burning dash. Ooh, a skydive coming in. Panoplosaurus getting off that first shot. Wee, badoosh. Wee, badoosh. Badoosh. <laughs> okay, not a good start for many. But they could... A burning dash here could be huge. Okay, they're going for it. Oh, they didn't get it. That counter buff would have been massive. That would have been a massive hit, but unfortunately, they couldn't get it that time. Oh, and there's another skydive for Notlosaurus. Really making mincemeat of these T-Rexes. Smash. And triple smash. This is not good. Well, it's got no technique now, so Flare Sword's got no chance of activating it. That's a tight. Wow, Nemius hasn't even got hit. 
Come on, at least give them one hit. Nope, no, no hit at all. The man is Panoplosaurus is out for blood. The blood of a T-Rex, that is. And, well, just like the T-Rex, he admit, many's dreams of passing this trial are getting crushed. Uh, that was that was really unfortunate. Unfortunately, it didn't happen for them, so... Okie dokie, up next we have got Mulberry coming in with you struck the Spondylus. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to do here. Because again, you know, a, they got all wind moves. It's going to be a big struggle against that Eocarcaria in particular. But again, you know, Utahraptor was able to do it, so it can be done. Of course, so far, the, well, the last two sacks haven't been able to get past the Panopolisaurus, so can Mulberry have any better luck against it? Um, they didn't specify to start with a specific move, so we'll generate like normal. That's a good start there, that's going to trigger the Mayfly. It's a tie. It's another tie. These ties are problematic. They are wearing down via you, you strip the spondylus. Okay, there's a hit, and that's a crit. That's a good shot from you. Strip the spondylus. You strip the spondylus. One of the more balanced wind dinosaurs in this game. In terms of uh, its uh, attack stats. Because a lot of the wind types have very high crits, but you strip the spondylus doesn't. It's one of the few. And that's an earthquake from the Panopterosaurus, and that's going to shake things up. That's really not good for Mulberry, because ideally they want to face the Eelcark hero with as much health as possible. Ugh, that's not good. But can they take out this Panoplosaurus? Because it's tight. Oh dear. I don't think they're going to, and the Quest is going to come in and kill any hope that Mulberry has of passing this trial. Whoosh! Flown away into oblivion. And wow, Panoplosaurus really taking no prisoners at the minute. <laughs> and unfortunately for Mulberry, it is going to be a failing grade. Okie dokie, up next we have got Necro's Blood Claw coming in with a Rugops. Now, unlike the Ustrap Despondent, this Rugops' is crit does hit really, really hard. But is that going to help him? Uh, they also requested to start with Rock as well. Um, this is, I think this Rugops, even, even though it's our type disadvantage against the Eelkark here, I think it has a good chance. Because his only move is Hurricane Beat, and that only gets triggered after a loss. Oh, well, it's going to get triggered right now. <laughs> oh my god, Panoplosaurus is showing no mercy to you guys today. Like, five, it's, it's had five wins in a row now. Five matches in a row, it's beaten. But the, the, it's killed the dinosaur. Can it make it six? Ooh, okay. Rugops getting a hit, getting a tie bomb going. I believe this Rugops is tight defense type as well. That's definitely going to help him out. Oh, that's not though. That's a crit, and that's a big shot from Panoplosaurus. And oh my god, is Panoplosaurus going to win again? Come on, Rugops. You can do it. Okay, he does do it. He gets a hit. I think that's a crit block as well. But Tybomb's going to come in. This is going to help Necros get back in this trial. But with such low health and the threat of a super Eocarcaria waiting in the wings, things are looking bleak. Right, as per the crit rules. Shockwave rules, sorry. Rugops will be going for paper. As will the Panoptosaurus. Now that does blow up the tie bombs, but yeah, look at that. Rugops can't tank another tie. But are they going to get another hit on the board? Another crit block? And even if the Panoptosaurus die, doesn't die here, which it doesn't, the tie does guarantee that Ne... This does guarantee that Necros... Oh, no, it doesn't. The Crystal Crush has been triggered. That's going to stop Necros getting a tie. Well, the tie, he doesn't need a tie, he needs a hit. Let's have a look. You can't go scissors. But you can go rock. And, well, Panoplosaurus going down. His kill streak ends at five. But, 
yeah, it's gonna be a long shot for Necros to pass his trial now. Eel Karkiria coming in next, a tie's enough. Let's see how far Necros can go. Can they get a hurricane beat off here? Even with tight disadvantage, Rugops hits really, really hard. Oh, they do. Okay, this could be huge. A big hurricane beat coming in. And what's even better is that, that hurricane beat will disappear now. So Necros's crits will do normal damage. Which going up against a fire type is not too bad. But yeah, look at that massive hit. And in fact, I would say a normal crit might be enough to finish the eel area off. Could Necros pull this back? Oh, no, no, there he goes. Kiss of death. As <laughs> soon as I mention him pulling it back. There's the hit. You know what? It was a valiant effort. I thought the Pinoctosaurus was going to sink in, but nope. The Rugop really dug deep and took out Pinoctosaurus at least. Okie dokie. Up next, we have got Nephilium coming in with a Saltosaurus. And they have requested to start with Scissors. And yes, I've done it again. I swiped the Goma guard while swiping the second dinosaur. Because <laughs> I obviously, you obviously, when I do, when I set this up, you can't do a 1v2 matchup. You have to do 2v2. And then just don't swipe anything for the second dinosaur. <laughs> anyway, anyway, back to this trial. Um, this will be interesting. So we're going to start with Scissors. Okay, that's a tie. Obviously, when it comes to Saltosaurus, as I'm sure most of you know, all of its power is in the crit. It does have one of the hardest hitting crits among the water types. But Panoposaurus getting his crit off first also has a hard hitting crit. Because I believe it is a lethal type. Okay, it's another type. Saltosaurus really struggling to get a hit so far. Okay, there's a hit. And it's a triple head buff. Padoosh. Gonna bust them kneecaps of the Panoplosaurus. <laughs> Padoosh. Oh, it's like a throat grab then. Okay, that does trigger the Crystal Crusher though, so that is a bit of a problem. Oh, what we got here? It's an Aqua Javelin. Good strike back from the Philia. Okay, and the scissors scissors effect has been triggered here. I don't think it's going to matter though because any hit would be lethal. Oh, Panoplosaur is getting the hit. Oh, they get the hit and the Saltosaurus goes down. And unfortunately for Nephilim, it is a failing grade. All right then, up next we have got Navar coming in with Megalosaurus. And I believe they want to start with scissors. I think. But well, I just checked it two seconds ago. I think they want to start with scissors. Well, they should. <laughs> well, they didn't have the best tournament this year. But you're hoping they do a bit better in this trial. Right, I'll double check real quick. Yeah. They do want to start with scissors. Ooh, and they get the crack. And this Megalosaurus is warning type. I like the fact that the Panoplosaurus' spikes keep sinking into its body. Oh, that's another hit! This is a promising start so far. Okay, the Crystal Crusher has been triggered. Oh, the Crystal Crusher be activating. That could be damaging. That's going to lower the Megalosaurus' defense as well, so it's going to be more vulnerable to damage. Dun, dun, dun. Oh no, it's not the Archaeopteryx charm coming in there, and I did generate that because of scissors. The Archaeopteryx charm coming in there, nullifying that Crystal Crusher, healing up the Megalosaurus. Really good response there. Another tie. And Panoplosaurus going down, and the Me Megalosaurus coming out of it, relatively unscathed. It did take some damage, but not too much. So things looking good for Nirvan so far. Will they be the fourth combatant to pass this trial? Join in the likes of Blood Moon, Futuristic and Gold. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Here comes a stun dash. The Segnosaurus is going to come in, but because the stun dash does deal an after effect debuffing move, the Archaeopteryx Charm is going to activate here and heal up the Megalosaurus. Oh, no, it doesn't, does it? Oh, oh, okay. Well, uh, never mind. <laughs> Okay, that's a tie. No heat eruption to the relief of Navarre. And that's even bigger relief. That's a crit. Can Megalosaurus pull this back? Okay, that's a tie. Oh, Megalosaurus clinging on. Okay, there's a hit. Okay, it is awakening time. Elementor! Oh, Jarko Fusion! Well, it's all on this now, isn't it? Can, can Megalosaurus get this here? Oh, they can't! And instead, it's a crit from the Eelkark. Not that it matters, because it would have had lethal anyway. But unfortunately oh, for Nirvana, they just, just ran out of gas. Okie dokie, coming, in, coming up next, we have got Orion Nebula Goji. I think it's a newcomer, yeah? Coming in with a Giganontosaurus. Definitely going... Oh, wow, look at that. Maximum power for the crypt. <laughs> Your standard Giga. I think, yeah, we had a Giga earlier and it didn't fare too well. And I didn't want to start with anything specific, so... Well, they'll be happy with that stuff. That's a crit right off the bat. Okay, that does trigger the Crystal Crusher, though. The one, and that's a hit, and that's a skydive. Oh, that's a skydive coming in. It's going to lower the Giga's tech. It's going to reduce his chances of getting off that Flare Sword. Okay, it does trigger the Magma Blaster, though. And, well, there is the Magma Blaster. Just like that, Panoplosaurus going down. Feeling the burn. Right then, on to Eocarcaria. This is very promising so far from uh, Orion. But, well, we've said that before, haven't we? <laughs> Another tie. No heat eruption now. Oh, but Eel Karkiria does get that first hit. Oh, it's a flare sword as well. That's going to be lethal. Lethal damage done to the Giga. And Orion Nebula Goji is not going to pass this trial. Okay, up next we have got Random Shy Guy coming in with a Megalosaurus. Well, we just saw one Megalosaurus do reasonably well. Almost get it done. Will this one get over the line? Well, we haven't had a pass for a while, so we are due a success. The guys are new one. Uh, they didn't want to start with anything in particular. Let's see what they can start with. Oh, they get hit first. Panoptosaurus land in the skydive. This Panoptosaurus takes losing very personally. As you can see. It's going to lower Megalosaurus' technique, which is not going to help. Okay, it's a tie. The tie probably don't favor Megalosaurus very well. Oh, no, well, that. But the Dino Stuffer is going to come in. It's going to put a stop to that crit. That could be crucial come the end game. Okay, that's another tie. Ties really wearing Megalosaurus down. Megalosaurus takes loads of damage during times. And that's an earthquake, and is that going to be lethal already? Wow, it didn't even get a hit. 
Panoplosaurus out for blood in this match. Megalosaurus blood dance. And oh wow, yeah, just like that. Well, that was rough, wasn't it? Right, up next we have got Rayborn coming in with a T-Rex attack type. And it does have death fire, so this is going to be very intriguing. And they also requested to start with scissors. Well, they won't start with a death fire, but they're going to start with scissors. Can, Ray, can this T-Rex succeed where the others did not? Oh, that's not good. That's a sky, a sky dive, not the start you want for Rainbow. That's going to lower the chances of seeing Tupufora dive as well, and possibly Death Fire. Not a good start. Right, that's the one. Oh dear. Well, yet again, it looks like Panoplosaurus is out for T-Rex blood. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, and the death fire didn't get triggered either, so I don't think we're going to see it. Can this T-Rex at least get... Okay, that's a tie. And that will kill any hopes of a death fire from Raybo. Okay, there's a hit, though. A triple four, a dive. Rex finally getting a hit on the board. And the Crystal Crush has been triggered, which definitely puts the odds in Pinoclosaurus' favour now. Six. And yet, yeah, there it is. The Crystal Crush is going to finish the job. And yet again, a T-Rex falls to Pinoclosaurus. Oh, kind of, I, thought you'd do, I thought you'd do better than that, but uh, here we go. Right, next. Alright then, up next we have got Shazzy coming in with a T-Rex. And they also want to start with scissors like Rayborn. <laughs> but we have seen what Panoplosauruses have done to T-Rex in these, in these trials. So, can this one be the first one to get past Panoplosaurus? <laughs> or will Panoplosaurus' blood run against T-Rexes continue? Well, they're going to get the first hit, which is not good. Going for the scissors backfired there. <laughs> it's also going to reduce the T-Rex's technique, so it's going to decrease the chances of a seeing a flare sword. Again, not a good start. Oh, that's another sky dive. Come on! You're not telling me not one T-Rex in this in this entire trial is gonna pass Panoplosaurus. I think this is the last one. There's no more after this. Come on, get the crit, get the crit, get the crit. Nope. <laughs> Panoplosaurus is just having none of it. Another tie. Four. And another tie. Come on! Is, 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 come on, is he not even gonna get a hit? Okay, he does get a hit. It's a oh it's a power drain. This might be a crucial power drain, because it could put the T-Rex's HP just give it just enough HP to survive a tie. Oh, and a flare sword as well. Well, for the first hit of the match, that's a pretty effective hit. Is this T-Rex going to be the first one to take... First T-Rex to take out Panoplosaurus? Yes, it is! Well, at least you got to Eocarcaria and the Power Drain is going to get some more HP back. And now I would say this Rex could definitely tank a tie hit. So it's not over yet. Now, let's see how it fares against Eocarcaria. Oh, that's a tie. And yeah, both power drains proving vital. Keeps the T-Rex alive for another round. Oh, nope, never mind. There's a crit. <laughs> you may have got past the Panoplosaurus, but the Eocarcaria finishing the job.
But the moral victory for Shazi, they did beat Panopolis Sword for T-Rex, and they're the first one to do it. Okie dokie, coming in next, we have got Storm coming in with a Pentaceratops. Um, things haven't gone well for the guys that have used Pentaceratops in this trial thus far. Can Storm be the first? Uh, they do want to start with paper. Or will Panoplosaurus continue its murder spree or Pentaceratopsis? It's already taken two out in, this, in these trials. Will it take out a third? Oh well, with a start like that, probably yes. Well, that backfired. Oh jeez. Um. Okay, this isn't going well. Okay, there's a crit on the third time of asking. A recover, a light recovery to come as well. Well, they need it after that start. And actually, that's a pretty good shot there from Pentaceratops. Oh yeah, the normal cryo doesn't have spikes like the secret version does. I mean, I only mention it because uh, I was working on cryo the other day for Evolution 2. Well, this is a good fight back from Pentaceratops after those two early crits, and that crit's going to do it. Panoplosaurus going down. Right then. It's all down to whether or not the Pentaceratops has enough gas in the tank to finish off this, Eel take out this Eocarcaria. It's going to be tough, though, because one hit will end this trial for Storm. But they have rallied back pretty well since after those two early crits. That's a tie. No heat eruption, though. That does trigger Gatlin Spark. And we're going to see it. And all of a sudden, it's storming with a chance. Oh, wait in time. Jakofuja. If they can survive this, the Eel Karkaria will be on really low health and on the brink of going down. This could be big for Storm. Can they at least survive? Oh, they can't! That time's gonna do it! And well, despite a really good fight back from Storm, those two early crits definitely did the damage. Okie dokie. Up next, we have got, well, me! And I am coming in with an Iguanodon, which was randomly picked at the start of the video. And here is my moveset that I came up with. So we've got a Galley Rush. We've got a Tappy Jaradive and a Fall Rush. I don't know how this is going to do, but here's hoping that we'll do well. We'll at least get past Panoptosaurus. <laughs> and uh, I'm not starting with any specific moves, so I'm just going to generate like normal. Okay, so two. Oh, um, that's not a good start. <laughs> but I do have type advantage here. And I'm the only one that has type advantage over the Panoplosaurus. Yeah, that's paying off so far, isn't it? Right, come on, Iguanodon. You can do better than that. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> this is a horror show. Come on, come on. Um, next. Alright, up next we have got the Skrill coming in with a Margosaurus. Uh, they want to start with Rock. And here's hoping that they have much better luck than I did. Fun. Right, I'm rooting for you last, the next three guys. Cool, you, you guys can do it. We've got three, we've got two more left after this. Come on, let's have three wins in a row. Aha, yes! Oh, that's a crit block as well. That's a very good opening move from the squirrel. Okay, so that it means that the squirrel will be going to take that. You can't go scissors. You can't go scissors. Yeah, go rock and take your hit like a man. 
Okay, well, they're getting hit, but they're not doing too much damage. The market says we need to get a crit here, but an Aqua Javelin definitely helping out. But yeah, it's a good start from the scrap. Oh, here comes the crit. My instant regret of picking Panoplosaurus. Oh, there's a skydive. That's going to be problematic for Skrill. That's going to lower the technique of the Amargosaurus. That's going to reduce the chances of getting off that Aqua Javelin. Now, I will say, we did see one Amargosaurus pass these trials. Futuristic managed to do it. While being in, under similar circumstances. But no! Skrill, not so lucky. Panoplosaurus really showing no mercy in this last section. Wasting everybody at this point. Okie dokie. Up next, we have got Tiamat coming in with an Alpha Acrocanthosaurus. I think the first one we've had. And well, the only one. <laughs> and they wanted to start with scissors. Just trying to get a firebomb off by the looks of it. They did want to start with scissors, didn't they? Oh. Come on, Tiamat. Let's see what you can do. Okay, that's a tie. Ooh, and they, well, they get the firebomb off on the second time of asking. But a good start there from Tiamat. Ooh, the Crystal Crusher getting triggered, though. That could be problematic. Well, not problematic for this Alpha Acro. Another firebomb incoming. This is steady stuff from Tiamat. Can they take out this Panoptosaurus? Yes, they can. And that's a, that's a third firebomb in a row. And that third firebomb is going to be lethal for Panoptosaurus. Will Tiamat be the fourth combatant to pass this trial? Well, the, the, the Super Eel Karkiri is going to have something to say about that. But so far, so good. We have to say, so far, so good. Okay, that's a tie. Now, Heat Eruption is a factor here, so they do have to be wary of that. Oh, the Eel Kark not falling for that firebomb. Okay, it's another tie. Well, we don't come and see many heat eruptions from this Eocarcaria throughout this trial. But Alpha Acro getting off a fire cannon this time. A much needed hit. They are losing a bit of health. Ooh, this is tense. Can this Alpha Acro get, get that crucial hit? Oh, it's a stun dash. I think Alpha Acro will survive this, but it is going to leave them on really low health. And that does mean that Tiamat is going to have to get the next hit here if he wants to pass this trial. Oh, that's a tie, and unfortunately that tie is going to be lethal for the Alpha Acro. And down it goes. But, you know, they took out the Panoplosaurus at least. Good effort, though. Right, we're going to move on to our last entry now. All right then, our final entry. We have got Ultra Lord coming in with a Carnotaurus. Uh, they want to start with scissors. And can Ultra Lord finish these trials on a high? Come on, one more success. Let's make it five. No, four. Let's make it four successes. Come on, everyone. We've got Rally behind Ultra Lord. Scissors. Okay, that's a tie. Oh, that's a crit. That's not good for Ultra Lord, but very good for Panoplosaurus. Okay, there's a hit. 
Uh, Tapijara dives to come. Ultra Lord Fight getting the first shot of the match. Getting the Crystal Crusher trigger though. There's the Tapijara dive adding extra damage. Oh, another hit. Okay, after that shaky start with the conceding the crit, Ultra Lord getting back into this. Okay, that's a tie. The Nocturosaur is determined not to let Kano get a crit. That's another tie. Well, it's not looking good for Ultra Lord at the minute, but they are going to take out the Panoplosaurus. But the bigger threat is coming in next with the Super Eel Carcaria. And Carnotaurus is on really low health, so any hit is going to be lethal. And it has Typhus advantage as well, so it's going to be a challenge for Ultra Lord here to pull this back. Okay, there's a hit. No Tappy Jara dive this time. Oh, no, there it is. Quick as a wink. And unfortunately for Ultra Lord, the Panoplosaurus did too much damage. And they do not pass this trial. But a good effort there. And that's it. So we'll tally up how everyone did and we'll end the session. Right, that, that is it for the tr that is it for the Halloween trial. Wow, it's been, definitely been a marathon. If you're still here watching, I definitely commend you. <laughs> um, so yeah, very interesting stuff. So very 50-50 against the Panoplosaurus, with the majority of you guys defeating the Panoplosaurus, but failing to beat the Eocarcaria. And 16 poor saps did fail, including me. And we actually did get a draw with Dino Hunter, which really did take me by surprise. And three of you actually passed, so well done to the three guys that passed. I will do another one of these trials for Christmas. I'll probably make it a little bit easier than uh, this one. You just have to see what I come up with. And yeah, that's going to end this super long se session. So I hope you enjoyed. Happy Halloween. And until next time, ta-ta.